This is a case of a routine grade 2 nucleosclerosis which is planned for a clear corneal phacoemulsification. By now side port entries are made and viscoelastic is injected to form the anterior chamber. A good tight fill of the anterior chamber with viscoelastic is necessary for a smooth capsular excess. A bent cystitome needle is then used to initiate the capsular excess. A flap is raised. The flap is then maneuvered in a circular fashion by using a combination of shearing and dripping forces to create an adequate 5.5 mm capsular excess. The flap should remain folded to avoid runaway while coming sub-incisionally. The final pull of the capsular excess flap should be towards the center to get a circular sized rexis. A 2.8 mm keratome is then used to obtain a biplanar square shaped corneal incision. Hydrocannula then injects fluid underneath the anterior lens capsule and you can observe the fluid wave passing the center of the nucleus. It is then tapped in the center and the same procedure is repeated on the opposite side. Now in FACO 1 mode with a power setting of 40 and a vacuum of 50, the cortical matter is removed first so as to get a better hold onto the nucleus while doing the chop. The FACO tip is buried under the core of the nucleus and the direct chop is initiated. You can appreciate the splitting of the nucleus. Now, with the same hold, the second chop is initiated. Now, rotating the nucleus 180 degrees, the last chop is also completed. Mechanical separation is then done to confirm the split of the nuclear plate. Now, emulsification of the nuclear fragments is done by bringing each of those nuclear pieces up to the pupillary plane and emulsifying them in a controlled fashion. You can observe a well-formed anterior chamber and good followability of the fragments. Since we are using the linear foot pedal, we do not have to be worried about the last piece as the vacuum is under our foot control. This is a pre-loaded Nidec Actis SP foldable intraocular lens which can be injected even through a 2.2 mm corneal incision. It is known for its 360 degree square edge which is known to reduce the incidence of PCO and also for its blast finishing which is used to reduce the adherence and improves the visibility of the haptic during implantation. Bimanual irrigation and aspiration is then done. The cortical fibers are stripped towards the center and it is then aspirated in a very controlled fashion. You can see that the irrigation is kept in one side without much movement. The aspiration of the cortical fragments at the sub-incisional site can be done by gentle rotation of the wrist. This is because of the angulation of the irrigation and aspiration cannulas. This is also known as the rock and roll technique. This IOL undergoes a very unique manufacturing process called as double polymerization. This eliminates water molecules along with the unreacted monomers within the polymer network, reducing the incidence of glistenings and subsurface glistenings. Under irrigation, 
the foldable intraocular lens is then injected into the capsular bag. And with the help of a Sinsky, the trailing haptic is also dialed into the capsular bag. The IOL is also known for its unique and functional design. It features a square edge around a full 360 degree circumference of the lens, including the point of haptic junction with a small gap. This enhances bonding of the IOL surface with the posterior capsule, minimizing the incidence of posterior capsular opacification. This is the gap between the square edge of the lens. You can see that the intraocular lens is well centered and there is very good overlap of the rexis margins over the intraocular lens. The side ports and the main incision are then finely hydrated and the case is closed.